Glory to God. As you're joining in, share this broadcast. Invite your followers. Now, I'm dealing with the, the man of God in this broadcast. Let's deal with something real quickly because when you're a man of God, you're a divine man. There's certain uh, responsibilities that Jesus gives to you that he doesn't give to a woman. A woman is the weaker vessel. There's certain assignments that he gives to you as a man and he wants you to develop as a man. And oftentimes is the moments of pressure that Jesus is a uh, birth in manhood out of you. Is the moments where you're in the heat of battle, the fire, that the Holy Spirit really starts molding you into manhood, his way. Because the world has a different type of manhood. If you studied like uh, if a man has a little boy child or a son, most times, depending how that man was raised, he's not able to hug that son. Let me just say this. Let me give you some wisdom, doors. Divine men love submission. That's the trait that they take on from the female gender. Because you know how God is strong on women submitting. But divine men love submission for themselves. Because you have to adapt to a lot of things that the Lord will have you do that will go against what you already planned, what you already designated that you was going to accomplish. And oftentimes he'll have you go against what you already set in your mind that you was going to do. Because he's testing your surrender. Whenever you have a plan, as a man, when you ask God for wisdom and understanding, he's going to show you whether or not that plan was from him. And then he also going to give you instructions on how to complete that plan. So he's not going to leave you undone. Oftentimes, God will put a man in position to help uh, people because men are deliverers. As a man, you was created to deliver people, not put them in bondage. There's two types of men. There's a Pharaoh type of man. There's a Moses type of man. The reason why the word of God was so powerful, because in every text, we see the difference in what type of man was operating. One man was Moses. One man was Pharaoh. So one man is creating bondage, another man is creating deliverance. So we're seeing how God operates through a man of God and how Satan operates through a man of Satan. The man of Satan is making people lose their confidence, their value. Pharaoh is making them lose their dignity, their desire to worship the Lord. But here comes Moses and he's restoring it. He's restoring their convictions. Saints, did you know that the children of Israel, when they was with Moses, they was operating out of their convictions. They felt convicted that they should be quiet and submit to him. But they, they fought him, fought him, fought him. But really they was in conviction. Because conviction is a place of discomfort. If you take a note, write that down. Conviction is a place of discomfort. And it's divine discomfort. It's the Holy Spirit making you uncomfortable so that you'll make a change in your decisions. Discomfort is really a path for greater wisdom and good understanding. Because good understanding deals with your behavior. Wisdom deals with your mind. Wisdom is what God teaches you. Understanding is when you take what God teaches you and you use it. But we see two types of men in the text. We see Moses bringing deliverance. We see uh, Pharaoh bringing the demonic. 
So there's men of bondage, there's men of blessings. A Pharaoh type man is insecure. A Pharaoh type man is insecure. Pharaoh really didn't have confidence. That's why he put the people in bondage. So that he could feel better. The children of Israel wasn't welcome to soul, worship, praise God, obey God. Moses, on the other hand, the Bible says he's the most humblest man in all the earth. So humility is actually a gift to the people that you lead in. Humility brings liberty for people to worship God around you. So hereby now we see Moses increasing the children of Israel's desire to be servants, friends of God. Because saints, remember Jesus talked about how servants and friends are different. He said servants don't know what their master is doing. So as a man, let me just say this. You notice I said servants and friends. Because if you are, as a man, if you just remain a servant of God, that means that there's going to be a lot of blind spots in your life. You'll deny the prophetic anointing. If you only choose as a man to be a servant of God, you'll have a lot of ignorance about you and you'll damage the people around you because God created you to be a vessel, a channel of wisdom to impart greater knowledge. So if you reject friendship and just adapt to servanthood, the prophetic is going to be very low in your life. There's going to be certain stuff you're not going to understand. Remember the sons of Issachar. Remember the Bible said that they had understanding of the times and the seasons. So here's what's happening. They stepped into the realm of servanthood, but they didn't stay there. Because servanthood is for you to get God's attention. Friendship is when you get the revelation that you already got it. Servanthood is where you grab God's favor. But friendship is when now you're exercising the favor. Isn't that powerful? So when you step into friendship, the favor is no longer a pursuit it's a possession. It's an empowerment. And now you're moving in it. So now you have access to his voice. Divine men pray in the spirit. Divine men pray in the spirit. If you're going to be a divine man, you got to love praying in the spirit all the time. Remember, Apostle Paul said, I wish that you would pray in the spirit as much as I did. Because as men, we're going to have so much decisions that Jesus wants us to make that we're going to have to be in tune with the Holy Ghost. Saints, I, I know that there's some days where I have to make decisions and deadlines often are stumbling blocks. You know why? Because deadline pits you underneath the pressure of man. But at the same token, God knows that you live underneath uh, this world system. And so... He'll still give you the speed to complete deadlines and to be successful in the midst of pressure. But what the Holy Spirit has done is through tongues, he gives you an acceleration in how you receive information from God. Imagine this, praying in, in understanding is like a Nissan, but praying in the spirit is like a Lamborghini. You caught that? Praying in the natural, like with, with, with your normal English, is like driving a packed plane. But pray, praying in the spirit is like being on a private jet. I don't know if you've ever been on a private jet before. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been on a private jet before. But on a private jet, you able to not have it. You don't got 50,000 people. You, don't, you know, it feel like that. You don't, you don't got nobody smell like cheese. 
You don't got no, no, nobody. Because you always sit next to somebody that's trying to flirt with you. <laughs> well, if you're an ugly man, that ain't going to happen to you. If you, if you, if you look like Dikembe, that ain't going to happen to you. But when you in a private jet, you able to focus. There's clarity. You're not clustered. And there's a speed that the private jet goes that's faster than just a normal plane, a normal airlines. And that's what happens when you're praying in the spirit as a man. You go at a faster rate. Your decisions become more accurate. Your decisions become more precise and bold. As a man, if you don't have boldness, you're going to be manipulated by people that give you wrong counsel. Because even if you become successful as a man, there's always going to be a large margin of people that will try to manipulate your success and tell you what you should do rather than what God wants you to do. Saints, if you ever noticed the children of Israel, they at one point started pitting Moses underneath pressure. We want meat. We want quail. We want fish. We want this, da, da, da. Uh, when we was with Pharaoh, he gave us this. So now we see the manipulation. If Moses is a leader that can't hear from God, he will be overcome with the pressure. And this will happen to most men. Most men, they get overcome with pressure and then they shut down completely. Most men operate the way they operate out of pain. A man can be in pain and then he become... Uh, what they call it, you know, they present themselves as gangsters or they present themselves as like, you know, that they're tough and really they're hurting. Most times the people that you see act the toughest are the people that are hurt the most. Since I went to school with young men that uh, Jesus so gracefully let me get to their heart, not off of rebuke, but they saw I was cool, you know, and then... Uh, We'll get chances where we'll talk. I'll talk to them about Jesus and I'll break them in the way that the reason why they was acting so bad in class was because they had pain that they never dealt with. Whether somebody molested them, uh, whether somebody um, bullied them before, or whether they had parents that didn't care about them, they probably was adopted. And most times they demonstrated the most rebellious behavior. But as I would talk with them, you got to you gotta know how to go in with the wisdom of a serpent. A lot of times you don't have to uh, press the envelope of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus on people because most times your presentation of Jesus is like a dirty plate with good food in it. So Jesus is good food. But your presentation is a dirty plate. And so they getting turned away from the plate because of how you jamming it. You don't know how to do it. You got to have the wisdom of a serpent, especially when you deal with people that's hurt. Because a lot of men are hurting. And that's why oftentimes men slander other men. That's why most times men talk about other men because they themselves have insecurities. They have things. And they, let, let me tell you something. There's nothing wrong with that. That can be fixed. But what I'm saying is most men hide behind their bam, 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 so that you don't see. Uh, uh, they don't want you to see that. So they bam, bam, bam. And uh, in, inwardly, they're hurting. But saints, God has a vulnerable side to him. So if God has a vulnerable side to him. Every man has a vulnerable side to him. A man has been given the God image, the God likeness. And remember, woman came from man. I'm going to do a brief uh, video on woman as well. You woman of God on here, I'm going to do a, a brief video on woman as well. But man came from God. Woman came from a man. So here's the thing, like, men have a vulnerable side to them. That's why we need you. So you never try to damage a man about what you think that he's weak about because that's where you come in. <laughs> Oftentimes, men don't want to even reveal 
nothing to nobody because of the fear of being slandered or laughed at. Even God needed companionship. In Proverbs chapter eight, the wisdom angel is telling us, I was with him before the worlds began. And she's a female angel. I want to stick in the stream of men. I so easily can go off a woman, but I want to stick in the stream of men. But there's two types of men. We see Pharaoh, we see Moses. Pharaoh is releasing bondage. Moses is releasing blessings. Moses is bringing the desire to worship. Pharaoh is bringing the destruction to not worship. Pharaoh is pitting the children of God in chains and Moses is breaking them. There's two types of men. Now, I want to go even deep on this. Remember, there was Joseph and there was Potiphar. Remember, Joseph was serving Potiphar, but when Potiphar's wife lied against Joseph, he believed. So there is something um, about men that are manipulated or men that are bamboozled <laughs> or men that are, um, they succumb to pressure or they are gullible men. They, they don't easily discern the truth quick. Saints, do you ever think that Potiphar got the revelation that Joseph didn't rape his wife? He believed. He believed. So hereby we see men that stand for the truth and then men that oftentimes can be deceived. There, we often talk about women being gullible, but there are men that can be gullible. There are men that could easily fall into de deception because they don't pray in the spirit. They don't ask God for wisdom. If you don't acknowledge the Lord in all your ways as a man, you very well will be deceived eventually. You may not be deceived in the first season, the second season, the third season, the fourth season, the fifth season, but you will get deceived eventually as a man if you don't. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. Every man should take a moment where you ask Jesus, am I doing what you want me to do? Is there something that you need me to change? What's in my life that's disturbing you? What's around me that aggravates you? Every man should take that moment. It don't have to be five weeks because Jesus don't take that long to talk to you. Most times the slowfulness to hear God is really um, because of your neglect to pray in the spirit. If you take a note, you can write that down. Slopefulness to hear God is often connected to your, um, your neglect of praying in the spirit. Because remember, I told you, uh, praying in the natural is like a, a plane, but praying in the spirit is like a private jet. Praying in the natural is like a Nissan, but praying in the spirit is like a Lamborghini. Your, your goal is to go fast, but go fast accurately. Because most times when you go fast, you can get into a wreck. Saints, I got a fast car. My motor, vroom, vroom, vroom. Saints, I can drive in my car just for therapy. Because the motor is good for a man. I, I don't know if you're a man like me, but I like... I like stuff with uh, power to it and velocity. It make you feel like you you the top of the ball. Since I be on the road and people be up there trying to trying to flex on the road, I don't even be studying them. Cause when I hit my when I hit my gear, I'll pass you in a minute. <laughs> so so, but but see, it, it's in a man. It's in a man. <laughs> we got testosterone now. Watch. So so most times there be other men that come alongside of me with their little push buggy, you know. Uh, the Mexican cars that sit low, their belly sit low like a serpent. <laughs> they come up with a car. All their motors sound the same. I think I think all Mexicans, all Mexican cars got the same mechanic. 
I think that there's one mechanic that fix all Mexican engines. Got all of their engines. You be on the phone talking on the phone. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm coming over. I'm about five. You can't even hear no more. You just, you going like this. Yeah, I'm going over in five minutes. I'm. Cause the Mexican engine done drowned you out. So when I'm driving in my car, I just let them flex for a little while. Then vroom, when I put my when I, when I press my gas, I'm gone. I like cars like that. My first car that I ever drove was a white Mustang. That white Mustang was so fast when I got in it. Uh, I was like, what, 14 years old? I was like 14 or 13 years old. When I got in it, that car was sliding. <laughs> I didn't know how to handle that stuff because the, the motor had a, you know, I don't know if you know, fast cars, some of them got the motors that got spinners in it. So, like, the car would start spinning if you don't know how to steer it. So, that was my first experience, and it kind of shook me up when I first got into it. I pressed the gas, and then I just started spinning. But then I got a hold of it. But, saints, I want you to catch this. That's the same way it is when you function as a man. You can be going in, in, in complete surrender to Jesus one day, and if you're not careful, you can start going out of control, and you got to pull the steering wheel back. And start praying in the Holy Ghost again. And start praising God again. And start meditating on the word again. You got to take the steering wheel back from demon spirits that's coming to destroy your destiny as a man. Because let me tell you something. Uh, it's so easy for you to follow the path that everybody else is going as a man. Because when you go a different path as a man, people going to laugh at you. They going to slander you. They going to talk about you. They're going to call you satanic because you don't function like them. And let me slip over to the ministerial realm for a minute. When you don't look like other preachers and you don't act like other preachers, they're going to call you demonic. Don't be afraid for Jesus to make you a different type of preacher. Some people want you to dress like every other preacher. You're not going to dress like every other preacher. You got God inside of you. You got uniqueness inside of you. You got somebody inside of you that loves variety. Here's the thing. When you walk in your uniqueness as a man, you attract persecution. It's going to happen. But be bold enough to stand with Jesus for how he made you. Don't change for people. Um, if you study my life, Prophet Joshua Holmes, I don't change for people. I'm anointed of God. I have the power of the Holy Spirit and the glory of God in a very special way. But I got here by receiving the uniqueness that Jesus wants me to have. You don't change because of pressure or persecution. You adapt to the Holy Ghost and you find out whether or not you need to change or this is how he made you to be. See, saints, once you hear from the Holy Spirit as a man that you are the way that he made you to be, you don't change for people. Jesus didn't change because the Pharisees thought that he was blaspheming. Daniel didn't change because they set a law not to inquire of God or man for 30 days. Even though they said, I'm going to throw you in the lion's den, he did not change. And I'm talking to the men on here and uh, really consider this. You don't change because you come underneath attack. You find out from the Lord. If he wants you to change, and once you get the clarity from the Holy Spirit, that's going to birth your confidence. You know pride is bootleg confidence because pride is where you don't inquire of God and you just go on with what you believe. But when you take the time to acknowledge the Lord, remember what David did. He said, Lord, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? Shall I recover all? And the Lord says, you shall pursue. You shall overtake and you shall recover all. 
divine kings, when you are king, you humble yourself underneath the King Jesus. And when you ask him questions, he's going to answer you. So never go to God uh, and inquire of the Lord and expect silence because he's not going to be silent. He know that you need, and you need him as a man. He know that you are leaning on him as a man. And saints, Jesus loves that. A lot of people will laugh and talk about you, but if you take the time to lean on Jesus, he'll back you. I don't say this pridefully, but um, there's no secret, uh, the ridicule and the slander and the laughing at that I experienced over Facebook. But if you notice, I went on the same Facebook turf. I preached the gospel and I reached millions of people. The last broadcast that I just did reached over 7 million people in one broadcast. What I'm telling you is that if you don't persevere to do your divine assignment and keep your loyalty to Jesus, you live your life in vain as a man. You're going to have to get what he tell you to do done. You remember when Moses was about to uh, step into his calling, remember he went go tell those brothers, stop arguing against each other. What was their response to uh, Moses? They said, we saw you kill somebody the other day. Who are you to try to judge us? Remember Moses ran from God for 40 years. Who revealed this? Stephen in the book of Acts. He had wisdom inside of him and Stephen began to talk about Moses' story, about how he ran from God for 40 years because of people. Did you remember when Moses had the staff and it turned into a serpent? The Bible said Moses ran. Because most men are afraid of serpents. Most men are afraid of attack. They're afraid of opposition. So when they get attacked, they go sit down, they get nervous, they get worried, um, they shut down on the Lord. And that's what God was showing Moses. You see this serpent, this is what you've been running from for 40 years. You refuse to listen to my voice because of this serpent. You refuse to be my prophet because of this serpent. You refuse to go forth and speak my words to my people because of this serpent. So watch what God does. He appears to Moses in what was called a burning bush. Burning bush. He shows Moses fire because now Moses has a choice to choose which fire he's going to receive as a man. Every man will be given an opportunity from King Jesus to decide which fire will he choose to walk in, whether the fire of the Holy Spirit or hellfire, or spend your eternity in hellfire. So now God is dealing with appearing to Moses in the form of fire because God is letting Moses know, you choose, which one do you want? Do you want the fire of the Holy Spirit? Or do you want the fire of hell for all eternity? Because you got to do what I tell you to do as a man. It don't matter what people say. It don't matter how much pressure you experience. It don't matter if you feel depression. Saints, if you notice, watch, Elijah called down fire from heaven. And the next minute he being faced with hellfire. He don't want to go for the Lord no more. Remember the Bible said, um, that he prayed to die. He, he don't want to go forth with the Lord no more. Huh? But he had just had an experience where he called out fire from heaven. But now he's in a decision mode where he can either choose the fire that he called down from heaven that brought victory over the demonic or choose hell fire because of his disobedience. So every man will be touched with that. You'll be touched with that. You'll have a moment where King Jesus will give you the opportunity. Either you can choose the fire that will lead you to hell or a hell fire for all eternity, or you can choose the fire of the Holy Spirit and stay on fire for God. I chose to stay on fire for God, and I'm bossing. <laughs> People can say what they want. Ain't nobody pinning up the numbers I pin up. And that's all glory to God. You can say, oh, you trying to be proud. No, I'm boasting in the Lord. I can do that because he did it. I done reached over a million people five straight times in a row. 
<laughs> so I'm telling you as a man, persevere with the Holy Spirit concerning his instructions to you. You're going to have to do it through hell and high water. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the fire was an opportunity to reveal to God their loyalty. Every trial in your life as a man is to show the Lord that you are in it. You're not going to leave for nothing. You know, it's crazy how people join gangs and they got to jump you into the gang, right? They got to jump you into the gang. But when we get in jumped into the gang of the Lord, <laughs> isn't it crazy how you complain? But those trials and tribulations, you get in jumped in. The stuff that you're going through, you're getting jumped in. And watch this. The Lord don't stop because he always want to graduate you as a man. He'll let you go to another form of fire. So watch this. David, his fire was that bear that went go attack the sheep. He defeated that bear. His next fire was Goliath. Remember, they was discouraging him. His own brothers was mocking him and telling him, get out of the way, boy. You don't know what you're doing. Because Oftentimes, nobody will see your greatness like God sees your greatness. Most times, nobody will even be able to detect how great you are as a man until you, until you meet maybe a true apostle or a true prophet that can bring out inside of you the king, bring out of you the royalty, because a lot of people will overlook you. And sometimes people want to link you to what they see that you're doing. Oh, you're a janitor. Oh, you just got this form of work. No, no, no. You are king. <laughs> you are God. You was created to yield to the Holy Spirit and have power being manifested everywhere you go. Moving in signs and wonders. See, Saints Peter went from denying Jesus to supplying Jesus. There's two types of men. He went from denying Jesus to supplying Jesus. One minute he's saying, I don't know the man. The next minute he's saying, in the name of Jesus, be healed. There's a difference. Now he releasing power. He went from denying to supplying. 